podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Every day we make decisions in our lives that can affect how we maintain a healthy weight. Tonight, Jeff Smith continues his series on Healthy Kids, Healthy Lives as he looks at one of the leading issues dealing with childhood obesity, nutrition. When it comes to nutrition, dietitians say you really are what you eat. And too many North Carolinians are eating in large portions of foods that are high in fat and cholesterol. So much of what we eat and how we eat is, is what we're used to. Um, if you're used to eating fast food three or four times a week as a child, that's probably what you're going to do as an adolescent and as an adult. The examples being set by adults is being passed along to children in our state as well. According to the Department of Health, the number of children who are overweight or obese in the U.S. has tripled since 1980. We're not talking about an aesthetic kind of thing. We're not talking about looking like the cover of a magazine or a, 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 you know, someone that has a perfect body. We're talking about a serious health threat that to a child, as they uh, become overweight, stay overweight, or be even get more and more overweight as they age, their likelihood of developing risks of chronic disease earlier in life is just astounding. In today's modern hurry-up society with two parents working, um, even having the regular dinner hour at home is becoming a thing of the past. I think there was a recent survey showing that the, your average American family may only sit down at the dinner table once or twice a week. And the other meals are, you know, fast food, gotta go. These are the trends that, uh, that have at least indirectly led to the, our obesity epidemic today. All across North Carolina, the state health department and educators are working on ways to cut away at the obesity issue in the centers where pre-K kids receive the majority of their meals during the week. Child care centers, daycare centers, pr public pre-K offer a great atmosphere to, to do a couple of things. One, and that's to feed our children healthy foods and beverages. And so setting standards that would create that atmosphere that where those healthy foods are served. And the other is education. And it's never too uh, early to start teaching a young child about fruits and vegetables. Well, we do a lot of fresh food because we just feel it's more healthier than for the kids than something out of a can because when it comes out of a can, there's sugar and salt and a lot of the stuff that you don't want added to it. When we're doing fresh, we are um, you know, just getting it in and prepping it and cooking it very quickly. So the kids are exposed to the fresh food rather than the can. Ken Williams is the chef at First Environment's Early Learning Center. Here, children play an active role in their nutrition through the center's on-site gardens. Teachers and students plant the seeds and raise the food, which is then brought into Chef Williams' kitchen to be cleaned and cooked for a variety of meals. I guess it's just a matter of deciding to do it because we just decided to do it and we are doing it and we are I feel like we are the poster child for being able to do it in a small space and with very limited funding and limited abilities. Growing fresh food in your own garden at home or at school is a cost saver in addition to being healthy. During the off season Chef Williams says the cost of getting fresh food is about the same as getting canned items. It costs about the same. I mean the the difference is the labor involved, the prepping, the cleaning, the chopping, the cooking, whereas with a can you're just opening it and pouring it into a pot and heating it up. When we're dealing with fresh green beans, we get in, you know, a case of green beans costs as much as a case of canned green beans, but, you know, we have to prep it and clean it and cook it. When it comes to nutritional needs, many dietitians and health departments agree that the most important meal of the day is breakfast. There are, again, emerging studies to show that breakfast is a very important meal. Um, the, the difficult thing is, again, with families being in a rush and a hurry, and oftentimes the school bus coming, you know, at 6, 6.30 in the morning, um, finding time for that very important meal is getting more and more difficult. And, and families. It's not easy, I will tell you that. There is a lot of rushing around at my house in the morning, but you just have to make that a priority. There are some things that you can let slip, but starting their day off with a healthy breakfast is not one of those things. It just becomes part of your routine, um, something you just have to do. Heather Ray understands how hard it is to stick to her routine of devoting time to preparing a breakfast every morning for her kids. Still, she says she knows how important this meal is to preparing her family for the day ahead. 
it's the best way you can start your day. You can't go off to school and think about the things that you need to do and be a good listener and make good choices if you don't have any food in your tummy. So it's a huge part of the beginning of our day at my house. And remember, these are kid-sized portions too, not adult size. For those families who send their children to a daycare facility that serves breakfast, it is important that these care providers also use healthy foods for your children. That's where this class comes in from the Mecklenburg County Health Department, which is held at the Culinary Arts Building at Central Piedmont Community College in Charlotte. The name of our class is Healthy Futures Starting in the Kitchen, and it is a childhood obesity prevention class. And what we do is bring in child care center cooks in Mecklenburg County into our program, and we train them in nutrition and culinary skills. The program, which started in 2008, is free to the county chefs and child care directors thanks to funding by Smart Start of Mecklenburg County. The hope is to grow statewide in the future to provide this service to all child care centers. Each session of classes covers the basics of nutrition and builds over the five-week course into designing and developing healthy meals to introduce into their center's kitchens. We've learned that most of the child care center cooks are not um, trained professionally on, on the culinary skills. So the very first day they go into the kitchen lab, they learn basic knife skills and they kind of ease into it. Once the classroom learning is completed, the group moves into the kitchen and begins to be hands-on and sometimes into the healthy meals. Every kitchen lab, when they come in, they have multiple recipes they're making. So they're not really making a full breakfast meal, just one component at a time. They're making lots of different dishes. They might make some smoothies. They might make some muffins. and what we try to teach them is how to pull that together, meet the food program guidelines, and make a nutritious menu that has lots of variety and provides the kids with all the nutrients that they need. It's a little bit more than that. There's simple, simple steps that we're trying to teach them, and when it comes to canned items, it's, it's things like rinsing that product before you go ahead and use it because of all the excess sodium that's used in the, pro, the packaging process of it. Um, and it, it's simplifying different techniques for them and showing them that they can cook a little bit more out of the box than they're used to. Tessa Harmon is one of the chefs teaching the class once it moves into the kitchen. She starts with the basic knife skills before moving into how to make a multiple step meal. But it doesn't take long for these child care cooks to feel comfortable with expanding their food choices for their children. And we've learned through working with the health department that children are really they're open to new tastes and new flavors and new things. They just need multiple exposures to it. So as long as we present food to the daycare facility workers in numerous ways, it helps encourage them to think outside the box and try something different without going crazy and still maintaining their regular schedule. It's very interesting because I've learned how to start serving the children a lot of healthy foods and it's, it works. Pamela Freeman is a graduate of the program. She has actually taken the course multiple times to continue to add new ideas to her culinary menu at her center. She says that the hardest part of introducing these healthy options is convincing parents of the choices. Well, a lot of parents are surprised because a lot of them didn't think the children would eat brown rice and wheat pasta. But they really, it, I mean, it's no big difference. It's no big difference. And the children are, to me, it, it's healthy. And that's all I'm about, is making sure the children are eating a whole lot of fatty foods and sugary snacks and stuff like that. So we use a lot of fresh vegetables and fresh fruit. Once these child care providers complete the classes, they're not done with the program. The health department calls the graduates and checks in on them to see what challenges they may be having. And there are also online recipes and challenges, which are based on the North Carolina Nutrition and Physical Activity Self-Assessment for Child Care Guidelines or knapsack. Every month we follow up with the best practice challenge and the best practice challenges are based on the knapsack program um, and the knapsack program is something developed in North Carolina and we use those guidelines so we call them so one month we might call them and say hey have you switched to 1% or skim milk for children over the age of two that's our knapsack best practice challenge this month. And the graduates say they take pride in applying what they learn to both their child care center and their home. Jeff continues the series later in the month as he looks at the role of physical activity in the prevention of childhood obesity. For links to some of the topics in this story and more information on this Healthy Kids Healthy Live series, go to our website at www.unctv.org slash ncnow. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV.